Hi, Junkies. Thanks for joining me. Hey, I want to expose something that I see a lot of mistakes being made on forward launches. You know, on a day with almost no wind like we have today, uh, we come out here and it's almost dead. In fact, this guy's cutting the grass here and smoke off the, off the, uh, off the exhaust and off the dust that they're kicking up from their cutting decks is just almost kind of floating in the air. Uh, a lot of times uh, when you come out like that, you know you're going to have to do a forward launch. And one of the common mistakes I see doing uh, among, uh, among people out there at fly-ins and at different events, I watch them, and I don't know who taught them this. And if an instructor is teaching you this, he's honestly doing you an injustice. He clearly doesn't know what he's talking about when it comes to the forward launch. You'll see a guy walk all the way into the back of the wing about eight foot in. Now, I've got this guy tied in for a forward launch here, and... He's, normally, I see these guys and even instructors teaching their students to walk all the way back in there and you just get a running start and then hit it as hard as you can. Well, when that happens, what happens is the nose contracts and it becomes smaller and even sometimes collapses slightly. It gets above your head, but it has all this drag time, all this dead time where the air is not inflating and going into the open cells and inflating the wing. Uh, the faster you can get air into the inside of that wing and have it take on the shape of the wing, the faster it's going to want to fly and get over your head. This way of uh, getting a running start and jumping is complete amateur. It's complete amateur. You want to you want to walk to the end of your lines, and you don't have to you don't have to launch hard. Just launch smart. He doesn't have a motor on his back, but we were doing it yesterday, and all you have to literally do is just walk forward. You don't have, you get to the end of the lines, he's got no slack in him, he's got his A-lines a little bit tight. Now, the, there is a slight little breeze and it has changed direction. But we're gonna back up with the camera, honey, if you wanna go back over there and just get the whole wing in here. And you'll see that we're not gonna get a running start, but the wing still gets up overhead. Now, it may not come up perfect right now because the wind has changed a little bit of direction. But I wanna show you that you're defeating the purpose of letting the wing do what it wants to do by really jarring it with that impact because you're closing the open cells. But watch as this student takes a launch here and all he's gonna do is just walk. He's not gonna do anything. He's got the A's in his hands and the steering in his hands. He's gonna walk and I'm gonna tell him now to release the A's. But he is not stepping eight to 10 foot back in the air. That is ridiculous. If your instructor is teaching you that, come on in and let me give you a rundown on how to do it the right way. I'm happy to work with people that that don't even come to us for training. But I'm happy to show you some of these methods and try this method and you'll see that it works much better. No matter what wing, no matter how lousy the wing launches, this will work. Take a look at it right now. And you notice his lines are tight. Just walk through. Come on. Walk. Let it go and run. Right. That's it. That's it. That's it. Okay. Well, as you can see, the wing eventually had to come down, but you see how fast that wing comes up. He didn't, he didn't run back in, he didn't jar it, and that way all the cells from the pressure of moving forward remained open. Air inflates into there faster. Now, he, uh, we did have the wind kind of change the direction a little bit and kind of shifting around here, but you can see from that side view how fast it came up. Try this method at home. If your instructor's teaching you that method of running back into there, you need, to, you need to knock that off. Try it my way. You're going to see that it's going to have much faster, much easier results, and the wing will inflate more evenly. Uh, if you hit it hard and one side collapses and the other side inflates, it starts then heading off in a different direction. Even with the wind changing direction out here, we were still able to get that wing up above our head extremely quick because there's no collapsing, there's no banging, there's no impact when you reach the end of the lines. So try this method. Let me know how it works. Thanks for joining me.